I'm going to wait a second until everyone is connected. I see people's audio being connected. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Happy Friday to everyone. This is not Tiffany Hicks. You should know that by now. This is Eric Harrison. And I am here to greet you and welcome you to this week's um, Team BRE meeting. Um, there's some serious things, some cool things that we're going to share today. And I am here to just meet and greet you and to have some of you introduce yourselves today. So we are going to start off with the round robin introductions. And this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to pick the first person and then that person picks the next person after that. As you can see, we just need your name, your business, your industry, and then a brief description of your program. Then after that, pick one of the colorful M&Ms. And once you pick that M&M, you tell us that thing that is next to that M&M. So there is one name that I see that I have not seen in a while, and that is Dr. Lawrence, Dr. Seth Lawrence. So I'm going to choose you first. So Dr. Lawrence, the floor is yours. Are you there? Literally, I just um, got my tech working. So all I heard you say was Dr. Lawrence, the floor is yours. And that leaves a lot open for interpretation for me. I don't know if you guys want that. <laughs> so, so this is what I need you to do real quick. I think, can you see the screen? Or are you just on your phone? And can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So can you see your screen? I think we may have to come back to him. We may have to come back to him. Shelly, did you hear everything that I said? Shelly, are you there? I, oh. I'm there. I did. Um, I've, I've done this before. That's okay. Do it again. Do it again. We want to hear it again. Okay. Sorry, I'm in a coffee shop. Um, can you hear me okay? All right. So, my name is Shelly Sherry. My business is nonprofit called Empire. And industry is nonprofit. Uh, and then brief description of the program. Okay, so Empire News, um, it's not profit, like I said, it's Houston based and it exists to empower underserved youth who are overlooked and underserved to achieve real life skills. So um, some of our core program areas are financial literacy, character development, and leadership skills. And let me choose one of the the M&M's? Yep, yeah. yeah, choose one of the M&M's. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like to eat um, so favorite food. <clears throat> favorite food is so my people love from the Caribbean. And so my favorite food is brown stew chicken with peas and rice and plants. Okay, you play too much. I have not had <laughs> I, mean, I have not had lunch yet, and you have no business saying that on this line right now. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. No, that's good. Thank you very much. Dr. Lawrence, are you available? Are you good now? Me? Yes. Are you good? I'm good. Yeah, I can see you. I just, if you guys can't hear me, let me know. No, we hear you loud and clear. And we definitely want to hear what you have to say. So do you see the screen? Do you see the things that we're asking for? Are you there? Yeah. Thanks. Hey, so uh, let me let me go ahead and take over. Hey, Dr. Seth, how are you? So I know that you are probably in a place where you might not be able to share. If you are, we're asking that you share your name, your business, 
your industry, as well as a brief description of your program. And then I will just ask you to tell us your favorite animal. That's a lot to remember. So name, business, program, and animal. Okay. I think my speakers are going in and out. Okay, well, we'll get you, you can introduce yourself at another time. I appreciate that. And I'm really glad that you're here. Um, I have a couple of other people on the call that may not have introduced themselves yet. I actually didn't keep um, a roster of it. So I might randomly pick um, the next person. Um, so just to share with you all, thank you, Eric, very much for stepping in and Danielle, as always, for being my support system. I had an interview um, that I had to be on um, um, and it and it ended like right at the time that this was going to start. And so I'm just now able, but I have an amazing team that supports me. So they stepped in and got this started so that I can honor everyone's time. So in the interest of time, um, if you have not introduced yourself and you are willing to volunteer, I would love for you to do so. I'm realizing that absolutely no one has their camera on today. Is that a Friday thing or what? What's going on with y'all? What's happening in your on your Fridays? Is there anyone on the call that has not introduced themselves? If not, we'll just move on. All right, Danielle, we'll just move forward. All right, so um, if you haven't scheduled your spotlight, please make sure that you do so. Um, that is important. If you have not had an opportunity to take a look, we've already started loading the spotlights. I will be highlighting you as we go. Um, this week, we um, I, I am um, substituting in for Dorita. She was going to do a presentation this week. Um, um, she, had, she had an emergency, so she wasn't able to do so. Um, but what we will do is if, I, if you are presenting or if you have something going on, then my goal is to make sure that we spotlight you um, on the week or during the time that you have something going on, um, or at least somewhere close to that. So I want to make sure that I share with you all that. Um, so spotlights are important. They're actually really pretty cool. The interviews have absolutely been um, amazing. Um, and so I'm excited about that. Um, so I'll move. Um, so if you haven't scheduled, please make sure you do. Um, also, you may get a call from our um, success partner, happiness manager. Um, and so she will um, um, be assisting you with um, scheduling um, um, your spotlight if you have not. So someone on the team will reach out to you or we um, encourage you to reach out to us. Um, it was in the form that we sent out to you. There was an opportunity for you to go in and schedule um, your spotlight. So with that um, being said, I'm going to move to the next item. I'm pretty excited about this. We have a bike ride, and that bike ride is going to be on 925. I, I said we, but it's not as in VRE, but I feel like we're all a team here. So I'm very um, excited to, um, to mention that um, we have a member that has a bike ride. So I'm going to actually ask her to come on and talk about it, if, if, she, if you don't mind, because you can represent your event much more more effectively and efficiently than I can. So if you'll come on and share with us, I would appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Tiffany, for announcing that. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if you can see me, but I think I'm going enable my life. Um, so I have a bike ride for my nonprofit organization, Empower You. It's going to be September 25th, which is a Sunday between 11 and 2 o'clock. Um, and this bike ride is to help raise awareness about who we are, what we do. And it's kid friendly, family friendly. It's actually a bike and brunch. So we'll be biking through Third Ward and then to Edo, East Downtown, and brunching at, I don't remember the name of the place, forgive me. <laughs> but it's a good brunch spot in East Downtown. Um, and then coming back to Third Ward um, to close it out. So it's to raise awareness about who we are and also to raise funds for our organization. 
So I want to issue a challenge to this team. I'd love five of us, at least by minimum, to join the bike ride. I know that I will be biking. And if you want a good laugh, make sure you come out. This is going to be interesting because I don't know how I'm going to make it through the whole ride. Um, so I'd like to challenge us to um, join this initiative and come out and bike ride with us. At least it'll give us a chance to meet each other in person. And I think it's a good way to start building relationships. Um, and again, you get an opportunity to laugh at Tiffany because I don't know know if I'm going to be able to make a whole ride like I'm, I'm in my mind I'm like can I call an Uber to follow me while I'm riding just in case I don't make it um, but I would really love for us to support um, Shelly in her endeavor so if you have more questions please make sure you reach out to Shelly she has also put the information in the Slack channel um, and if you have not joined our Slack channel please do so um, thank you so much Shelly we appreciate you I will definitely be there um, I'm, I'm definitely coming um and so the next um, item we have is our success part. Our success partner happiness manager um, is Kimberly Collins. Um, she should be contacting you coming up really soon because we have some things that we have to start talking with you all about um, because we have some serious deliverables. Um, and so now we're um, a little bit closer to we're a little bit closer to um, starting the the process of the delivery of service. So there are things that we will need people to start providing. Um, and so we'll, we'll be having a discussion about that in today's call. Um, so I am ready to move forward. All right, so we have a program deliverable deadline for October 31st, and I will talk to you a little bit more about what that means. But um, so right now, the way I look at it is we have people offering different services. Um, a lot of you have sent me a draft of the things that I asked for. So you've given me the description, you have given me like your objectives and you've given me your impact and your benefit and you've talked to me about the logistic pieces. What I do not have is your actual program in a lot of cases. So what does that mean? That means that I don't know, I don't know, I do not know all of the um, details of what it is that you'll be presenting. So in order to make sure that we are on brand on this contract, um, I need to make sure that I engage with each of you and find out a little bit more about what you're offering. So some of you are going, but Tiffany, I am not on here with a training program. I'm on here doing professional development. I understand that, but that is still programming which means that we need to find out what the client's experience is going to be. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, some of the things that I want you to consider um, that, that you should have this no matter what you're participating in, even if you're a coach, even if you are a coach, a professional developer, a speaker, or if you are a trainer, you should have a roadmap. And that roadmap should be sharing with us what journey you are taking the client on. So whoever's participating, even if it's an event, that's still a client or just might be an audience of clients, but what journey are you taking them on? So where are they starting? What content and what concepts are you introducing? What are you navigating them through? And what expectation is do you have for the outcome, right? What results are you driving? So some key words that I would love like to um, give you for my branding for this contract um, or my organization I've mentioned before are high energy and transformation. High energy and transformation. We focus on employee experiences. Um, and, and that's very important because remember that our audience are, is teachers, students, and, um, and stakeholders. So again, even if it's not an employee experience, it would be a student experience. So keeping that in mind, my expectation is that everyone has something that is high energy, that is transformational, um, and that it has, a, has, has the ability to change the lives of the people that we are engage, engaging with. So roadmap is important. Um, you also need an outline. Um, and, and so I know that this is for some people who are on this call, who you all have all your stuff together, I understand that this is rudimentary for you. I want you to um, know that I'm going over this because there are some people that I have identified that are just not there. Um, 
they're not any further than the information they sent me. And so I want to make sure I'm setting everyone up to succeed. And I'm also making sure that I am protecting not just my organization, but protecting yours and the contract by making sure that we are delivering in a way that meets the expectation that we put in the offer. If you've not looked at the offer, now is the time for you to start doing so because now is the time if you have not put your programming together, you need to look at the offer it, because it does need to align with what I am offering the district. So the next thing is going to be your objectives. You need to make sure that you have a clear set of obje objectives. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I did a presentation where I talked about the fact that your objectives should flow. It should have some continuity. It should be fluid. You don't, don't make sure that whatever you're putting together, you can't take people all over the place. Like you need to take people in a straight logical line. So make sure you have objectives. Also, um, you need visuals and it really doesn't matter what you are navigating through on this contract. You need visuals. If you're a speaker, you need some visuals. If you are a coach, you need some visuals, right? Um, because we want to keep in mind that we have to manage um, all different types of learners. If you're not aware of what that is, I'm going to be honest with you. I probably shouldn't, we probably, we probably shouldn't even be having this conversation if you don't know what multiple learners are, but I'm going to go over it. And I know that didn't sound cool, but I'm just like I'm literally making sure that everybody kind of has a good understanding of that. If that is a problem that is difficult for you, I really need you to let me know that because we need to have a deeper conversation. So um, learners are audio, visual, and kinesthetic. Um, and what that means is, you know, you're, you like to listen to information, you like to see some information, and you like to physically do something um, kinesthetically. And then also, there's also um, writing, right? So what I'm encouraging you to do is to make sure that your training materials include something for all learners. Even if you are a coach, this is very important because remember, as a coach, you are still helping your clients navigate through material. You are helping them navigate through their thoughts. So there's there might be, you know, you may want to have something that helps them um, manage that experience. Um, I know that the leads will be reaching out to each of you because the leads have a set of expectations that, so I'm sorry, let me pause there. Training materials. What does that include? Well, it could be anything. You could be doing some fill in the blanks. You could have a journal. You could have a workbook. You could have a book, an actual book um, that you're working from. Whatever that is, you need to have that prepared and ready because I need to view whatever your materials are because I need to vet everyone's program. And then I'm also asking that you have activities, even if you are a coach, even if you are a speaker, even if you are a professional developer, because activities are important. Activities are the things that people remember. That's how they're going to remember what you went over with them. It's going to drive it home. It's going to be the thing that they remember if they don't see you again. So if you're a speaker, this is very important because this is how they're going to remember how you are. Um, activities are, you know, the things that people are able, when I say activity, I mean giving the people a way to immediately activate or immediately implement the information that you are sharing with them. Even as a coach, there should be a way for them to start immediately um, implementing the solution that they have come up with you as their coach. So, that brings me to each of the team leads will be having conversations um, with you if you are if you have fallen under their branch, um, and they will do a great job of expressing you know the expectations. So Sophia is amazing; she knows exactly what the expectations are um, of coaches. I'm going to leave her to her expertise. Um, she has built a team of coaches. Um, there's only maybe one or two people that are here that will be operating, maybe three operating operating under um, her branch and she'll be reaching out to people. Um, I had invited people in the beginning prior to knowing that we would do some team lead stuff. So I am letting Sophia lead that part because that is her area of expertise. 
the interesting thing is that about two of the people that are actually on the contract, we actually got our coaching certificates um, with Sophia being our um, being our coach. So she doesn't really have to worry about how we're going to operate in the space because she's aware of that. So shout out to Crystal and myself um, because we participate. Sophia is an amazing mentor coach and she has an even more amazing academy. So I'm going to let her do what she does best. Um, she will be... Um, giving us some parameters um, in which we will need to have um, be operating under if we are participating in the coaching part of um, the program. So next we have um, Eric. So Eric is the team lead for um, professional development um, and the same applies here. So Eric and I had a discussion about the fact that um, professional development is really still going to fall under the lines as we as it relates to training. So everything that we need um, for the training um, environment is going to be the same thing that we'll need for professional development. Um, the biggest difference for professional development is we are asking that you provide a reference of at least two to three people that you have professionally developed, and we want to know what those results are. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to call them. I mean, we might, I don't know. But what we have decided is, is that we need proof that you have developed someone to success. Okay, so um, Eric will be um, in inviting you all to those conversations, correct? Mr. Harrison, is that right? Um, yes, I will. Okay, thank I'll you. Reaching out. Thank you. All right, so next we have Dorita Hatchett. She will be um, the speaking engagement um, team lead. So I will share with you all. I asked Dorita. I'm so thankful for Dorita because I really asked Dorita last minute to join. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was hesitant. I knew she was really busy. I was afraid she was going to say no, but I knew she was perfect for this. Um, very specifically because of her production experience, because she produces things um, that are amazing online and offline, in person, um, wherever it is, there's some excellence happening if Dorita is att attached to it. Um, so I thought that it was not that far of a stretch for me to say, hey, she's hired enough speakers for events, right? She has produced the events that the speakers have been at. So I'd love her to lead the leg of this. So again, um, Dorita will We'll be setting some parameters. She and I have had some discussion about it, um, but I trust the team leads that I have in place, and I trust that they will give me the direction that is needed to guide this team of, of, of wonderful individuals. Um, but I just want to make sure you know that we have someone that um, is going to be setting the standard in your area of expertise that you have chosen. Um, next is myself. So I am going to be leading the trainers. Um, and so, um, I, so I specifically can talk to the training pieces. Um, not that I can't speak to the other ones. It's just that I don't want to step in the lane of the people that I have trusted to um, use their expertise to drive the narrative in those areas. So if you are on this contract and you are a, um, a person that will be facilitating training, um, please write this down. Number one, I need a recording of your training or I need you to invite me to whatever your program is because I need to experience it because I need to make sure that it is meeting the expectation of what we want to deliver for this organization. Some of you have already put your things together and that's great. I, that's awesome. I love it. Um, so if you have a webinar and if you can invite me to it, I will be a silent participant. I'm going to be honest with you. I will be grading it. I have an observer's form. Um, so I will be grading what you are doing because I need to make sure that it is meeting the expectations of how we want to show up in the marketplace. And I'm also looking for um, the things that I've mentioned. I'm looking for what do your materials look like? I'm looking for what are your objectives? Objectives. Do you meet those objectives? I'm looking for whether or not I can see any transformation happening. I'm looking to see if people are engaging with you. I'm checking your energy level. Um, and then ultimately, um, the, the last part of what I am checking is, is it transformational in a way that I believe has um, great impact? So, um, if you do not have your program together and you are doing training, 
is very important that you contact me. Like I need an email, a text message, send a pigeon. Um, I need you to let me know because I need to figure out where you are and if you can make the deadline of October 31st because that is a hard deadline um, because I that we won't know until after September 30th when we're rolling, but we will be doing some heavy marketing um, as of the 30th. And so if somebody submits an um, opportunity or an order for training, I want to make sure that you are um, ready for it. So we have to make sure that we vet your materials first. Um, if you have a purely online program, that's not a problem. If you're already set up, that's great. Um, I do need you to send me um, some type of code so that I can access that program and watch it um, and, um, and, and provide feedback. Um, if you have not put it together yet and you're one of those people on the on contract that your desire is to do it in person, I'm so okay with that, but I still need to vet your programming. Right. So there are some people that are here that I've already vetted them. So I've already participated in Christopher Allen's program. I know exactly what it is. So I know that his job is to just put his stuff in writing in a course or curriculum format. And I'm fine with that. Um, so so if if you have questions, please reach out to me. So um, I will encourage you um, to consider that no matter what part of the contract you are servicing, it is important for you to know that you have to have some kind of materials, some kind of coursework, some kind of pro pro program materials. There's something that you need. So I'll give you an example. Um, um, Sophia, and I'm, I'm only, I'm going to speak, this is not my expertise, but I'm going to speak for Sophia because I've been through her program, Right. Um, if if you are if if you are a coach, nope, I'm not. I, wait, I'm going to pause there. I am going to ask that Eric. Now would be a good time, and and, and um and um Danielle, y'all. This is not a perfect world. Today almost did not happen. Just so y'all can know, based on what was happening in my world, so I'm okay with being vulnerable and saying that we are literally doing today on the fly. But that's okay. I still think it's going well. I want to celebrate um, that everyone is here and everyone is patient and providing grace because I appreciate that. Um, Danielle, if you will go back to Eric's slide, Eric, I know that I'm putting you on the spot. Um, but what I'd love for you to do is to talk to people. Uh, about some of your expectations for um, training materials or for materials as it relates to professional development. I did mention the references, but if you could share some of your other expectations, that would be great. Right. Um, the other huge one for me is, is I need to see results, metrics. Um, within professional development, it's fine for people to be able to say, that I got what you said and I'm implementing it. But the biggest thing in all of that is that we need to be able to show what those results are, whether it's um, retention of employees, whether you're, active, that you're more efficient with some of the processes that you're working through on a daily basis, um, whatever that may be, maybe even a project being done a little bit quicker or even interaction with um, if you're a leader, interaction with the people that you're responsible for. Whatever that is, we need to be able to see those numbers. Why do we need to be able to see those numbers? There are several reasons why. Number one, it is for the evaluation of you and your program or whatever you'll be presenting so that we can implement it into our solution. And also, the other reason why we're asking for all of this stuff is that we are going to be looked at by various individuals and organizations, schools all over, administrators all over, leaders all over. And that type of information will be there for you so that people can look at what you've done and choose you so that they can bring you in. So the more information that you provide, the bigger chance that you'll have to be chosen to be able to provide those services. So it's not only for us to be able to, you know, kind of bet and see what's going on with people, but it also gives you a tremendous opportunity to be able to deliver your services to multiple people. And that's it for me for right now. That was the main thing. Um, I think Tiffany already mentioned uh, the references. 
and also materials as well, whatever materials you may have. I think we also said that as well. So I would love to see exactly what you give to people, whether it's a booklet, a pamphlet, a workbook, even if it's online, um, that would also be something that I need to say. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much, Eric. I appreciate that. So I appreciate you doing what leaders do. I didn't ask you, I didn't even forewarn you about that, but I will share with you all that um, leaders are prepared at all times, right? A leader has the ability for someone to tell them at the last minute, because here's the thing, when you know your stuff, when you're, when you are a leader in your industry, you don't really have to get prepared to talk to somebody about professional development. If that's something that you really do every day, you're already prepared prepared to do that. So for me, I don't have to get prepared to, to, to deliver a training or to deliver a conversation because this is what I've been doing for the last 20 plus years of my life. I'm already there. Like Danielle and I can whoop up a PowerPoint in 15 minutes if we have to. So just understanding that is important. I did ask Dorita if she would be willing to come to, to speak to us. I don't know. I just sent her a message. If she is, that's great. If not, I totally get it. Because again, like I said, I kind of just, I, I kind of threw this on um, the, the leaders that are on the call at the last minute. Um, and I don't know if Sophia is here. Um, but I will, um, hold on one second, giving Dorita a moment to answer my, um, my, um, chat. I and, sent by, the, and by the way, Tiffany, I'll say it if no one else says it. We are extending you all the grace, so it's good. So breathe, it's Friday, let your head down. You know what I'm saying? Nobody needs to be tight. Let's chill, let's have a great meeting and just roll right on into the weekend. Let's go. Well, I am actually over time. Um, so I thank you. I, I appreciate you. When I tell you I appreciate you, I really do. I thank you for that. Um, I um, um, Dorita has not responded, so I'm going to go with that is a no, but that's okay. Um, Danielle, can you roll us through to where we were? I'm sorry, what did you ask? I, I, the phone rang. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. The, so the ask was if you would mind sharing like what some of your expectations are for the people that are um, wanting to speak on the contract, like what do you expect them to have together as it relates to your producing an event? What should the speakers be prepared for? Um, I'm actually in the car, so I'm not prepared to speak to it, but I have a checklist and um All right, yeah. If it's virtual, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, you kind of went out for a minute, but we're still hanging out. We're still okay. listening. Okay. So Dorita, I'll ask that you do that you next checked time. Off. I know I put you on the spot. So and you're 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 going in and out, but that's okay. Um I will um come back to it and cycle um back on this um for next week. Um hopefully I will get be able to give someone some heads up. And what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to ask um Dorita to share. She has a checklist, and then also I'll be able to ask Sophia if she can share as well. Um, so so there's that. Thank you very much. I appreciate Dorita. I, I appreciate you engaging. Thank you, Eric, for all the grace because I needed it. My shoulders were tight. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Okay. So good leaders do not take on all the work themselves. Neither do they take all the credit. Thank you so much. Danielle is the, she put that, that quote there for me. She is amazing. Um, I don't take credit for any of this. I would not have been able to make it here today if there wasn't for certain people that have been here to help me out and to step in when I couldn't step in. And I want you to know that there will be times when that's going to happen been on this contract. So I really want us to get to know each other, have each other's backs, um, even if it is because maybe you didn't understand some information um, and you need someone to help. I want to give a shout out to Renice King. She's on our contract and today is her birthday. So happy birthday. If you all know how to use your emojis, let's do a celebration button or a love button or something. Everybody give um, um, Renice something, like give her something, show her something um, or put a, put a happy birthday in the chat. Um, that would be pretty awesome um, because I know that she would appreciate it. She is an amazing soul. Um, the last thing that I do want to share with you before everybody um, runs off or before everyone leaves is um, so there are a couple of really important things that are coming up. 
Um, and so one of those things, um, just to let you know where we are on the project. So I will be going to vet the venue that Dorita um, sent us. I thought I was going to be able to go yesterday, but I did not. Um, but I'm going to be going to go vet the venue for the after event on the 30th. I'll, you have all been invited to that. You'll get more information. So the cadence is on the 30th, um, myself and the leadership team um, will be participating in, um, well, some of the leadership. I know for a fact that Eric will be there and I'm positive that Key will be there. Um, the other leaders, it is totally optional for them. We'll be doing the IPASS event, which is where we get to meet the um, stakeholders and the leaders um, for the school district. And we'll be doing a vendor table. Um, we have placed the order for our, um, for our promotional items, which I'm pretty excited about. We'll be able to show you the mock-up in one of our other, in our, one of our next meetings. I'm pr really, really excited about that. Um, and then also I'll be um, vetting the venue that um, Dorita has shared with me um, for the after event. And the after event will be from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Um, we'll share more information. If you can, please um, um, schedule September 30th. Um, make yourself available and free um, for 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. if at all possible. I would love to see your face. I would love for you to come and stop by um, just to say hi. But more importantly, I would love for you all to get an opportunity to meet each other. Um, and I would like for us to be able to bond. Don't forget, we also have a bonding opportunity on September 25th for Shelly's bike ride. If you are in Houston, please come and join. And I will share this with you. Even if you're not going to come and ride, it's a it's an opportunity for you to donate to Shelly's um, organization if you are interested. She does have a nonprofit organization. And so I'm just sharing that. Um, I'm just sharing that with you. Um, I feel like there was one last thing that I needed to share with you that I did not go over, but whatever it is, I will um, get that information out to you on another one of um, our, our meetings. So um, I'm going to go with my heart is clear at this particular point, but if you have additional questions and you really need to ask, please stay on. Um, Danielle, I'm going to invite you to stop the recording at this time. Um, and then if you need to leave, I know I kept you uh, 10 minutes or 11 minutes over.